Have you ever wondered how Europe as we know it today, came into existence? Our story begins thousands of years ago, in a time when the continent was yet to be named. Imagine a world where the hum of modern machinery was replaced by the rhythmic chipping of stone tools, where towering cities were non-existent, and the landscape was dominated by vast forests and rugged mountains. This was the setting for the dawn of civilization in Europe. In this early period, Europe was home to some of the world's first advanced societies, like the Minoans of Crete and the Mycenaeans of mainland Greece. These civilizations, though separated by the Aegean Sea, shared a common thread. They were pioneers in their own right, breaking new ground in areas of art, trade, and politics. Let's take a closer look at these trailblazers. The Minoans, flourishing from around 2700 to 1500 BC, are often credited as the first European civilization. Their society was remarkably advanced for its time, with palatial centers, intricate drainage systems, and vibrant frescoes showcasing a wealth of aesthetic sensibility. Then there were the Mycenaeans, who rose to prominence a few centuries later. Known for their military prowess, they left an indelible mark on history with their participation in the legendary Trojan War. But they were more than just warriors. They were skilled engineers and artisans too, creating stunning gold artifacts and massive fortifications that stand as a testament to their ingenuity. These early societies were far from perfect but their contributions were invaluable. They were the trendsetters, the pioneers who ventured into uncharted territories. They built complex societies, mastered the art of trade, and developed political systems, setting the stage for the future civilizations of Europe. These civilizations, with their unique contributions have etched their stories into the bedrock of Europe, shaping its identity and setting the path for its future. Their legacy is not just in their monumental ruins, but in the spirit of innovation and resilience that continues to thrive in Europe today. These early societies laid the groundwork for the sophisticated cultures that would follow. The Roman Empire, a beacon of law, culture and military might, but how did it rise and eventually fall? Our story begins with a city, Rome, founded in 753 BC by its first king Romulus. It grew into a rich and powerful city during the next few hundred years. By AD 275, Rome controlled all the land from the Atlantic Ocean to the Arabian Gulf. But what made Rome so successful? Its military structure was revolutionary, their soldiers were split into smaller units making them more flexible during combat. The Romans were also extraordinary engineers and architects. They built roads and walls, things we now take for granted. Yet, Rome was not just about war. They loved culture. They admired and copied Greek culture from their public baths and sculptures to their philosophy and plays. They even adopted the Greek gods renaming Zeus as Jupiter. The Romans were also lawmakers creating a legal system that is still influential to this day. But Rome wasn't built in a day. The rise of the Roman Empire was a blend of military power, economic wealth and sophisticated culture. It was a melting pot of ideas, a hub of diversity, and a beacon of civilization. Now, every rise has a fall. The fall of Rome wasn't due to a single event but a long process. Economic instability, over-reliance on slave labor, over-expansion and military overspending were among the factors that led to its decline. The introduction of Christianity by Emperor Constantine in the 4th century AD also played a part, as it shifted the cultural and social landscape of Rome. In 476 AD, a German chieftain named Odoacer overthrew the last Roman emperor, Romulus Augustus. This event is traditionally marked as the end of the Roman Empire. The fall of Rome marked the end of an era, but it paved the way for the Middle Ages. The legacy of Rome lived on, shaping the world as we know it today. From law to architecture, from language to government, the echoes of Rome are part of our everyday life. The Middle Ages often viewed as a time of darkness, yet it was also a period of profound transformation. How did it lead to the Renaissance? Let's delve into this intriguing era. The Middle Ages, a thousand-year epic stretching from the 5th to the 15th century, was a time of immense change. The church, with its all-encompassing influence, was the cornerstone of society. It was not only a spiritual guide but also a political force, shaping the feudal system that defined the social hierarchy. The feudal system, a pyramid of power with the king at the top and serfs at the bottom, was more than a social order. It was a complex web of obligations and protection, a system of survival in a time often marked by conflict and uncertainty. Amidst this, the Crusades emerged, a series of religious wars waged over two centuries. 
While the Crusades were violent and destructive, they also opened up channels of trade and cultural exchange with the East, sowing the seeds of transformation. As we transition into the 15th century, the winds of change begin to blow, heralding the onset of the Renaissance. This period, known as the rebirth of learning, saw an explosion of creativity and innovation. Art, once confined to religious themes, became a window into the human experience. Artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo revolutionized the artistic landscape, their work still revered today. In science, the universe was no longer a divine mystery but a subject of study. Copernicus and Galileo dared to challenge the church's geocentric view, proposing a heliocentric model that placed the sun, not the earth, at the center of the universe. Thought, too, was transformed. Humanism, a philosophy that placed humans at the heart of the world, flourished. This shift in perspective sparked a renewed thirst for knowledge, paving the way for the Enlightenment. The Renaissance rekindled the spirit of inquiry and innovation in Europe, setting the stage for the modern age. This profound transformation, rooted in the Middle Ages, was a testament to the enduring power of human curiosity and resilience. The modern age brought unprecedented change, but it also brought unprecedented conflict. How did these world wars shape Europe? The dawn of the modern age in Europe was marked by the Industrial Revolution, a period of rapid industrial growth that started in the late 18th century. This era saw the birth of new technologies from steam power to the telegraph, transforming societies and economies. The revolution was not merely about machines and factories but it also ignited a significant shift in culture and politics. The rise of nationalism was another defining characteristic of the modern age, people began to identify strongly with their nations, a sentiment that was often fueled by political leaders. This nationalism created a sense of unity within countries, but it also sparked tension between them. These tensions culminated in the outbreak of World War I in 1914, a conflict that engulfed the continent for four years. The war was marked by horror and loss, with millions of lives lost on both sides. The war ended with the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, a peace agreement that many believed was a mere truce rather than a resolution. Within two decades, Europe was once again plunged into conflict with the outbreak of World War II. This war was even more devastating than the first, with death tolls reaching unprecedented heights. Key figures emerged during this period like Winston Churchill whose leadership and resolve steered the United Kingdom through the darkest days of the war. The World Wars left a deep scar on Europe, but they also led to a renewed desire for peace and unity. The aftermath of these conflicts forced a collective introspection, a rethinking of the nationalistic ideologies that had led to such devastation. As we move forward in our journey, we'll see how this introspection shaped post-war Europe and led to the formation of the European Union. From the ashes of war, a new Europe emerged. But how did it evolve into the European Union we know today? Let's take a journey back to the mid-20th century. The two world wars had left Europe ravaged, its economy shattered, and its people yearning for peace. The need for unity was palpable, and thus the seeds of the European Union were sown. The formation of the European Union was no overnight affair. It was a gradual process, kick-started by the creation of the European coal and steel community in 1951. This was a strategic move designed to prevent any future wars by placing key industries under joint control. The idea was simple, yet powerful. Shared resources meant shared interests and shared interests meant peace. As the years rolled on, the community expanded, eventually evolving into the European Economic Community in 1957. This was a significant leap forward, promoting free trade and economic cooperation among member states. But Europe's vision surpassed mere economic harmony. It aspired for political unity too, and this aspiration culminated in the signing of the Maastricht Treaty in 1992. This landmark treaty, named after the Dutch city where it was signed, marked the birth of the European Union as we know it today. The European Union's impact on Europe has been profound, it has shaped politics with its unique model of shared sovereignty. It has influenced culture, fostering a sense of European identity while celebrating diversity. And it has transformed the economy, creating one of the largest single markets in the world. However, the journey hasn't been without its challenges. From economic crises to the recent Brexit, the European Union has weathered many storms. Yet, it has emerged stronger, proving its resilience time and again. The story of Europe is indeed one of triumph, tragedy, and transformation. It's a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of its people. And as we look to the future, one can only wonder, 
What's next for Europe?